So hey, what's going on guys? As you know, I'm James. I'll bring you another YouTube video. And this one is another top six video. This time we're not doing with typing. We may get his perspective on it, on a similar topic in the future. But for now, this is my top six favorite current, well, not current, actually. I can do current, well, let's change up. This is going to be my top six favorite WWE superstars of all time. Let's get into number six. So, my number six WWE superstar, favorite WWE superstar of all time, is none other than Mr. Version 1 himself, the current broken, or used to be broken, now he's back to being, you know, pretty much version one, Matt Hardy. Now, Matt Hardy, he's a guy that, you know, I have pretty much always been a fan of since I started watching wrestling. You know, of course, as a little kid, you know, seeing all the stuff Jeff was doing, I did kind of gravitate him more. But, you know, Matt, was, he was always good, really solid in the ring. You know, he was really great on the mic, though, and, you know, he really got that later in the career, especially with the um, whole broken, you know, gimmick. But nonetheless, you know, Matt Hardy, um, he's a multi-time tag team champion in multiple different promotions, you know, he's been the world champions in, like, over in TNA, he's been, like, the Cruiserweight champion, the United States champion. You know, Matt Hardy really has done it all with an exception of a WWE World title, you know, whether it be now the Universal WWE title, you know, if he ever gets those, I don't know, but that's really the only he's never done it in his career, and I don't think, you know, I'd hope to see him get a World title in the WWE at some point, let's hope he gets that, but anyway, that's my number six, let's get to my number five. Now, my number five is kind of a controversial one. You know, my fifth favorite WWE, WWE superstar of all time is none other than the Chicago Maid Punk. Yep, CM Punk. He is my fifth favorite WWE superstar of all time. You know, he definitely, you know, deserves of anyone's list. But, you know, just. You know, the whole CM Punk chance, you know, people just chanting that now, it's kind of a waste of time, and everyone knows that. I think the people that chant it now, it just, I don't know why they still chant this name. But, nonetheless, like I said, CM Punk, number five, um, deserving of it, you know, he has done a lot in his career, you know, won championships all around the world, you know, really made his name in, um, Ring of Honor before coming to WWE, you know, getting Ring of Honor, um, a five-star rated match on the Dave, <laughs> Dave Meltzer scale with Samoa Joe. Um, he had some really great matches there, and then, you know, of course, he came to the WWE uh, while signing his contract on the back of the Ring of Honor title. And, yeah. See, him Punk, though, came in ECW, one of the only... You know, one of the only people that believed in him being Paul Heyman. And... Even though he didn't get to do anything in ECW at the time, he uh, went on to win Money in the Bank at Wrestle 24 and do the same a year later, winning the World Heavyweight title twice because of it, once from Edge and once from Jeff Hardy. And he's done a lot, you know. CM Punk and Jeff Hardy both, I can tell you, you know, spoilers, but both of them are on this list. Hardy, uh, Hardy will be um, somewhere else, somewhere later down the line, but Punk is here at number 5. And there are a few between Jeff Hardy and CM Punk in the summer of 2009 that got me back in um, to wrestling, you know. Like, I like kind of took a break in, for a while. I really, like, I really started to be a fair amount of 2005, you know, just cause after a while I just kind of like stopped like, watching. It was like, meh. Wasn't that interested in like the song. Turned on, turned Smackdown on one night, you know, summer, the summer of 2009, and yeah, just saw Jeff Hardy, CM Punk, the whole alternative versus straight edge lifestyle and all that. You know, it really you know, struck a chord with me on, on like a personal level. And I just, I really love the feud. It was a great, great story playing, great matches, and um, yeah, it's just great. Um, Punk, of course, 
later in his career went on to become one of the longest, um, or went on to become the longest reign WWE Champion of the modern era, holding it for 434 days before, you know, The Rock came back and took the title from him, which I do disagree with, but you know, that happened in 2013, you know, can't dwell on the past now. But like I said, um, Tim Punk's done a lot in his career, definitely deserving to be on anyone's list, and he's at my, he's on mine at number five. But let's see who's number four. And number four is none other than Jeff Hardy. I already talked about him in the CM Punk one just a moment ago. And Jeff Hardy, you know, just like Matt, you know, I've always been a fan of him, you know. Of course, as a, as a younger kid, you know, I gravitate to, more towards Jeff because, you know, just all the high flying daredevil stuff he's doing. It was, you know, it was an inter interesting scene. So, in a way, he was almost, you know, his just unorthodox style, you know, just completely unbreakable. He's almost like the predecessor, in a way, to Dean Ambrose. I know most people say that it's Nick Foley. I don't see that way. I actually see it more as kind of Jeff than, you know, Mick. But nonetheless, um, Jeff Hardy, in his career, he's done a lot. You know, he's a world champion in WWE and TNA. You know, he's done it all. Um, Force time tag team champion. You know, for Jeff, it's primarily with his brother. Um, but I can't think of a time like he actually won tag team battle without his brother, but. As you know, Matt won it with MVP as well. I can remember that. But nonetheless, you know, he's had success in both TNA, WWE, um, definitely those two for sure. You know, he's wrestled on um, you know, the independent scene as well, where he's had some good, great matches in you know, Ring of Honor. And um, I even watched a couple of matches that the Hardy Boys faced the Young Bucks in a um, one promotion uh, that I don't remember exactly what the name of is now, but Matt Hardy on uh, his uh, YouTube channel, Matt, you know, Matt Hardy Brand. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description, you know, because he uh, uploaded both of the Young Bucks matches one and two that they had in that little independent promotion, where uh, actually Kevin Steen was on commentary for the uh, first matchup they had, and very intriguing uh, nonetheless, and I also found out <laughs> earlier that night, Kevin Steen had a match with Jerry the King Waller that, that same night. Um, you can probably f find out. Um, uh, you can probably find that match somewhere on YouTube. But nonetheless, you know, Jeff Hardy, he's done it all. So many great matches. And again, you know, he's at the spot on the list. Personally, for, to me, because just like CM Punk, he got me back into wrestling. He really made me a hardcore wrestling fan. And for that, I thank you. But anyway. That's number four. Let's get in to number three. And now number three is a very interesting one because my number three is a wrestler that's very that's been very underrated pretty much his whole career. And that is none other than Captain Charisma Christian. Because Christian, he's done a lot in his career, you know. He had well arguably his most success. You know, came at TNA as Christian Cage, where he was actually treated as a main eventer, got to hold the TNA World Title, and he had success there. Even came back for a very, very short stint, only to make actually one appearance at the uh, 2012 Slammy. I was about to say Slam Slammy Award, no, 2012 Slammiversary pay per view there. But you know, in WWE, you know, he's a multi-time Intercontinental Champion, multi-time Tag Team Champion with his partner Edge. Who may or may not show up on this list. You have to wait and see about that one. But uh, Christian, I've always liked him. You know, Christian Coalition. I mean, his war match was kind of entertaining, but you no, know, he was. But Christian, you know, he just sort of became like, in a way, I, I kind of like to say, you know, he became whiny bitch Christian, and I don't know, like I feel like maybe if he had that ring jacket, he could have held that world title and kept it leather longer. <laughs> yeah, just there be, they never tr took him seriously, you know, they, they pushed Edge like, to the moon when, like, Edge and Christian broke up, you know. You know, Edge won money in the bank, Cashin Kennedy's money in the bank, you know, just, Edge had so much success in singles, you know, competition, and Christian was just 
stuck in the mid card, you know, and I felt like that wasn't right, you know. Christian was, you know, really great, you know, just as good as Edge in a way, and he didn't get treated with, like, you know, the respect that he deserved. You know, sort of like Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, that whole situation, you know, Christian was kind of like the Matt Hardy, um, and, you know, Jeff Hardy and Edge were kind of like the same boat, both got pushed, where, um, the other guys did not. I mean, they did, but they, like, Matt and Christian were typically kind of more of the, of the mid-cards in WWE. And it sucks that Christian's out with an injury and he doesn't, you know, he can't really get, you know, just one last run, you know, hope, you know, one last world championship run, maybe even get, the, you know, the big one. But, you know, my opinion, Christian very underrated, but I've also been a fan of him. He's number three. Let's see who's number two. So, my number two, two, is the Rated R. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna stop now because I'm not Tony Chimble, but the Radar Superstar Edge. Um, Edge, you know, he's oh, one of those guys that you know, always been one of my favorites, you know. He was great as a face, he was great as a heel, you know, Christian. I just said Christian. Edge, you know, he really could do it all. You know, he was great in tag team wrestling, he was great in singles action, you know, he's. A, He's a total 11 time world champion and with 7 World Heavyweight Championship reigns, which, holding the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, that is actually the most, you know, um, World Heavyweight Championship reigns in the WWE. Um, of course, if you count, like, the title being, um, the lineage from, like, the you know, WCW, then, of course, that's Ric Flair. But, if you count just, you know, WWE's, like, version of the title, then Edge. Had the most of seven, which is a very, you know, big feat there. And of course, he also won four WWE titles. You know, Edge he did, you know, every bit of it. You know, he, he did well everywhere. You know, he was pretty much always only in the WWE. You know, he was always on the biggest stage, I guess. And um, he just he always did well. You know, great superstar, great athlete. And it sucks his career came to so early with that neck injury, but you know. Things happen in just, you know, some instances, you know, bits of bad luck happen. But unless he made his mark and he made every, took every moment and ran with it. And for that, Edge is number two. But let's see who my favorite superstar is of all time. Now, my favorite WWE superstar of all time is without a shadow of a doubt, why? J. Christian. Of course, you may have been able to, may have been able to see it coming in the way of, like, the like, list had already, sh you know, been shaped up to this point, you know, you know, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, Edge, Christian, CM Punk, you know, a bunch of, like, typically, you know, a bunch of, like, really great, you know, ten technical wrestlers and, um, people who all could also, you know, be high flyers, you know. Yeah, you probably could saw this coming, especially if you saw like some of the earlier videos. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Chris Jericho. Always have been. Um, and, like, can I just say, you know, if anyone would have told me that Chris Jericho and Matt Hardy would have been the two most over wrestlers in all of wrestling throughout 2016, I would have said they were nuts. But they did it. You know, Y2J completely reinventing himself along with Matt Hardy. You know, Matt doing the broken thing. They both were great. Jericho, though, um, his work with Kevin Owens was definitely one of the most entertaining things I've seen in wrestling, you know, throughout the end of, uh, 2016, start of 2017. You know, the Festival of Friendship, you know, on Raw, that was a huge thing, you know, Jericho. Kind of getting a taste with own medicine for when, uh, he shoved Shawn Michaels' face into the Jerotron 5000. Um, <laughs> Kevin did the same Jericho and Festival of Friendship, ruining their friendship. You know, Jericho, you know, he just, he was, he's always been great, you know, great on the mic, great in the ring, you know, he's 40 plus years old, still doing moves like he's in his 20s. You know, Jericho, he's just, even with like the dad bod, he's just, still great, you know. You know, and for me, Jericho's one of those guys, like, you know, I was, I, I kind of was like, I thought that we saw him as more like a, just a reliable worker, you know, anyone that you could, someone you could put into like a big match situation, elevate it, 
and you know, and you don't have to worry about, you know, something screwing up. That's always how I felt WWE thought of them. Um, and I think that was the case, you know, but also they treated him with a lot of respect and really pushed him a lot. You know, he's a nine-time Intercontinental Champion, six-time World Champion. You know, he's done it all. He really has, you know. Probably, I believe he has more, the most accomplishments of all, everyone else on this um, list. You know, with the exception of maybe the Hardys, or at least Jeff, who may get close to Jericho's record, but I doubt it. I think Jericho has a lot more titles than Jeff, or at least a little bit more. But nonetheless, um, that was, you know, that's my top six list of my favorite WWE superheroes of all time. Let me you know your list in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at James Murkerson. Until next time, I will see you all later. Bye, guys.